He fulfills the consequence of what the law deserves. And Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. And the wage of sin is death. So we don't get out of that death. We don't get out of the wage of our sin because of good deeds we've done. No matter how many green lights I run, if I steal from somebody, the police are, are well within their rights to lock me up for however long that punishment is for having stolen from somebody. And God is the most just God. If the policeman is walking down the street as a just policeman, God is way, way, way more just than he is. And so God, we see when he describes himself to uh, Moses, he says, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, who will not, not let the guilty go unpunished. So we know it's part and fundamental to who God is that he doesn't let the guilty go unpunished. So we meet a problem here and that we all know that we've broken God's law. We all know that we've lied, we've stolen, we've done things that we know, we've said things against other people that we know that we shouldn't have. We have not respected our parents the way that we know we should have. We haven't, we've taken the name of God and we've used it like a cuss word, like we would like the F word or like an S word, like a dirty word. Like think about the times you've used God's name and then ask yourself if you put your mother's name in that place, would you have said that? And the answer is no, that's disrespectful, that's terrible. But why do we do that with the name of God? Why do we do that with Jesus's name? Why do we use Jesus's name like a cuss word? Why do we use God's name like a cuss word? It actually shows our fallenness. It shows our need for a savior. Jesus Christ came to earth in order to take on our penalty of death, which we deserved, which we had earned, which we have still earned unless we receive him. He died on the cross and every moment that he was on the cross, he was paying for our sins. His blood was shed so that our blood doesn't have to be shed. But we can't just receive it. A lot of people say, well, yeah, I know. I know how salvation comes because God's very forgiving and he sent Jesus to die for our sins. But that's not the end of the story. What we read again and again in scripture is unless you receive it, unless you turn from your sins, unless you turn to God, you can't be saved. It says that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our hearts that he, that he was raised from the dead, that we shall be saved. But otherwise, it says that whoever does not have the Son is under judgment already. So what we see here is that the difference it makes of whether we will face God for all of our sins or not is whether or not we believe and we turn to His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus went around that during His life and the thing, everybody likes Jesus. Everybody likes to, you ask any religious leader and they'll say, yeah, I like Jesus. They'll make Jesus part of the religion. But what Jesus went around preaching is he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was Jesus' central message. He told people to repent. Nowadays, people don't like to hear the word repent, but that is, that is the thing that Jesus preached. We see in the Bible, when we talk about the subject of hell, and, and, you know, a good question to ask is, what of all the Bible authors, of all the people who wrote in the Bible, who spoke the most about hell? Jesus. Jesus spoke the most about hell. There's over 70 places in the New Testament where Jesus is the one talking about hell. Actually, every, almost every single thing we know about hell comes from Jesus' own words. Jesus actually speaking out those things. And what's scary is that Jesus didn't just talk to crowds who, who were kind of against him. Jesus talked to people who claimed to be believers in him. He talked to people who actually said that they respected him, who came out to hear him. That's who Jesus went and warned about hell. He said that, he said that if you actually see a believer, if you see someone who is hungry or thirsty and you refuse that person, that that is enough to actually condemn someone to hell. He said that if you say, Lord, Lord, if you're someone who respects Jesus, and you say, hey, you're even my Lord, but you don't do what he says, it says that that's, that's enough actually to send someone to hell. Jesus said that even amongst people that respect him and say they know him, that some people are like wheat and someone are like weeds. He said that in the last day, he's going to sort through those. He's going to sort through who is who are the people that really believe in him, who are the people that follow him, who are the people that did the things that he commanded and said that we should do, and he's going to say who are the people who did not. And then what the Bible says is that those people that did not, it says he's going to throw into an eternal fire. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus gave his parables. He said, he said if those people are found to be weeds, if they're found to actually not 
show the markings of what is a true believer, then those people are going to be thrown into the fire. But how do we prevent that? How do we how do we know that we are right with Jesus? What is the way that we can be right with Jesus? Is there any way? Do we just go our whole lives hoping that we are faithful enough? No, the Bible says that if you repent and you turn to Jesus, that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you haven't received the Holy Spirit, you don't have the power to run and to walk with Jesus Christ. So what we need to do is we need to turn to Him. We need to repent. We need to be baptized. We need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because then we can live with Him. We can live beside Him. Nowadays, there's a lot of people, because there's a lot of denominational fights and things that have happened, that people don't teach that message of actually coming to Jesus and repenting, being baptized, and being baptized with the Holy Spirit. But what we see in Acts is every single time a person came to faith, that's what happened. But often today, we say, well, you know, you don't have to have this, you don't have to have that. And instead of following Jesus, actually, we choose whatever our pastor or preacher for the day is saying. But what I'm saying is that the way that we can really be safe and know that we are right with God is that we follow all the things that he said. In Acts chapter 2, Peter says, and he speaks about, he speaks the word, you know, from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus, and he says, when people ask him, brothers, what shall we do? He said, repent, be baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we have to do. If you're going around and you say, I'm good with Jesus, but you haven't repented of your sins, you're not good with Jesus. You're not good with Jesus if you haven't repented of your sins. And on Judgment Day, it doesn't matter how much you consider yourself to be Jesus' friend, or how much you liked Him, or how much you read Him. It's not going to take care of you on Judgment Day, because you haven't repented and turned to Him as He said. He's going to say, I, don't, I didn't know this person. He's going to say, that person may call me Lord, Lord, but I don't even know who they are. Who is that person? And that's going to do us no good on Judgment Day. The only thing that's going to do us good on Judgment Day is if we turn to Him. And, and we have the opportunity. You know, the, the Word of God says... Okay, the Word of God says that now is the time to be... Now is the time of your salvation. Now is the moment. Don't wait to get right with God. Don't don't think I'm going to go home and I'm going to think about this. Don't think I'm going to go around. I'm going to, you know, talk to people. Or I'm going to go and, like, I'm gonna, I want to go and read up on something. Don't think that way because no one's... Tomorrow is guaranteed. There are 150,000 people that die every single day. And and we don't know if we're going to be one of them. I've lost like three family members in the last four months. It Today could be the day, your last day on earth. And if you don't go and make right with God before that happens, then you'll face judgment for your own sins. And there won't be an opportunity. Now is the opportunity. Now is the moment. Come, repent, and turn to God. We'll baptize you tomorrow if you want to be baptized. Um, come out and receive Jesus. Make yourself right with Jesus. Awesome! Woo! Fire! Praise God, praise God. Awesome! Good job.